Uh, Yongqing is a uh, currently a research scientist at Google Zurich. Uh, prior to that, he was a postdoctoral researcher with Luke Van Gogh uh, in a computer vision lab at ETH Zurich. So his research focuses on learning with limited supervision for computer vision tasks. So he, was, he is going to give us an inspiring talk on uh, learning unsupervised semantic embeddings for zero-shot image classification. Let's welcome. Thanks a lot for the uh, introduction. Thanks a lot for inviting me here. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Yongqing. So today I'm going to uh, present our recent works on zero-shot image classification, where we try to improve the unsupervised uh, semantic embeddings. So uh, let me start from uh, the definition of zero-shot learning, because uh, uh, this topic becomes quite hot recently, and the, the, a lot of different people are uh, usually confused by different uh, definitions, I feel. So um, in our setting, so the training set consists of uh, a set of uh, 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 images coming from uh, thin classes, right? But, uh, where, but uh, at a test time, we want to predict the uh, images coming from unseen classes that are disjoint from uh, the thin classes. So this task is uh, not be able uh, to be accomplished without using uh, external knowledge about uh, unseen classes, right? That's why in zero-shot learning, we usually have side information. In this talk, I will call this side information as semantic embeddings. It's basically, semantic embedding is basically the class level vector representation of a class. The nice thing of semantic embeddings is that it can capture the similarities between different classes, such that you can basically couple thin and unseen classes. All right, so, um, so there, there have been a lot of um, progress in zero-shot learning, but they are mainly in two directions. So in those two directions, they just treat uh, semantic embeddings in two different ways. So a very popular way of uh, using semantic embedding is to trying to learn a compatibility function between image and a semantic embedding space. Uh, for instance, here we want to uh, learn compatibility function f that measures uh, uh, compatibility between image x and uh, semantic embedding w. There are uh, a lot of classical work uh, in this uh, direction. And at inference time, so we simply predict uh, an unseen classes by searching for the uh, semantic embeddings that have the maximum compatibility score with the input image x. Uh, recently, there has been a lot of uh, uh, work on gener generative models in virtual learning as well. In this direction, so people actually treating semantic embeddings as a condition to a generative model. So more specifically, they try to learn a generator that uh, synthesize image features of unseen classes from semantic embedding vector and some random noise. So this has been kind of the state of the art now for virtual learning. So, but in this talk, my goal is not to uh, introduce new zero-shot learning methods like compatibility function or, or learning generative models, but rather we, I would like to uh, improve the semantic embeddings used for zero-shot learning. So uh, before I go to my talks uh, to introduce our specific two recent works, I would like to uh, give an uh, overview of what kind of semantic embeddings are available uh, for zero-shot learning. So the most popular one is called attribute. So for attribute, it is usually obtained by human annotation, right? Given um, basically people uh, usually look at the image and then try to identify a set of uh, uh, visual attributes if they are present in this class uh, or not. Right, for instance, is this bird, is head, breast, body, or, or color, those attributes. So the nice thing of attribute is that it really captures uh, very strong visual properties, which is really suitable for, for visual classification task. But it requires human annotation, and it does not really scale well to different uh, data set because it's uh, really difficult to annotate attribute. Uh, another way of uh, using semantic embedding is to use a hierarchy. So basic hierarchy, like, like WordNet, it um, uh, give us uh, a, a hierarchy, uh, hierarchical representation of different uh, uh, concepts, right? So this is nice because it's annotation free as well. 
but uh, it actually has only weak visual property with, because it's many constructed uh, um, by uh, semantic similarities. And, the, and the, not all the data sets have this WordNet hierarchy available. That's why it has poor scalability. So we are more interested in using text embedding for um, visual learning. For text embedding, usually people simply uh, just use uh, uh, some pre-trained language model and then uh, extract semantic embedding using the class name, uh, uh, using the uh, word embedding associated with the class names. It's annotation free and it's, uh, it's scale well to all the data sets if the class names are in the vocabulary of the language model. But the downside is that it has only weak visual properties. So in this talk, uh, I will present two works that try to improve the visual properties of text embeddings. So from two different perspectives. Uh, so the first work is uh, called the VGSE, Visually Grounded Semantic Embedding for Visual Learning. So this work has been published at the last CVPR with uh, uh, these authors. So um, here is the motivation. So basically we start by, we start this uh, work by thinking about how uh, people try to annotate uh, attributes. So for, uh, to annotate the attribute, uh, people usually <clears throat> look at a set of unlabeled image and then they try to identify what kind of uh, visual properties are actually shared across those, uh, uh, those images. For example, in this data set, uh, we might find that many classes have this black and white pattern and a lot of uh, uh, classes are living in the ocean, right? Seems that it's doing sort of clustering of uh, of local um, visual, visual properties, right? That's why we think that uh, can we actually um, basically automate, can we actually automatically uh, learn those uh, clusters purely from image data itself, right? That's why we, uh, this basically motivates us uh, to, uh, to learn those uh, uh, clusters of um, uh, local visual features from, uh, from pure image. So in this uh, image, we show that our models uh, can actually learn, identify those uh, visual public that are shared across classes. For instance, horns, uh, whiskeys living near the water, they, they can form meaningful clusters uh, by using our algorithm. So here's an overview of our uh, method. So our method has, uh, act, uh, has uh, two modulars. It's a, it's a two-step, two-stage algorithm. At the first stage, we would like to automatically discover visual properties from local image regions. That's why we basically segment the images into regions, and then we perform, we learn uh, we learn a patch clustering network uh, to um, <clears throat> to basically to uh, to cluster the uh, to discover some visual attributes from those uh, local image regions. So in those local image regions, uh, ideally, each cluster will correspond to uh, one, um, one visual attribute. Then actually from those visual attributes, right, then we could use those visual attributes, those clusters as a basis to construct the semantic embedding for each class. For example, for every class, after we learn this cluster, then we can basically compute the, the activation uh, of this class with, res with respect to every clusters. And then using this histogram of scores uh, with res respect to all the clusters as semantic embedding, right? Then basically we can, uh, next we, we just, we use the word embeddings to, um, of those class names to associate, uh, to, to predict the uh, semantic embeddings of, of, of unseen classes. So this is uh, basically the overview. Uh, now let's uh, start from the image patchy clustering modular. So given uh, an image, then we, we first, because we want to uh, discover the visual attributes that, that, that are usually uh, appear in the uh, local image region, that's why we first apply uh, the uh, offline uh, super, super pixel uh, method like, like, like to generate uh, um, uh, image regions. Then we crop those regions uh, into patches. Uh, those uh, patches will be our training data for the patch clustering network. 
So our patch classing network uh, actually take just simply it simply takes a patch as input and then predict its uh, uh, class cluster label. But the question now is that we do not really know uh, the class the cluster label of each image patch, right? And we do not know how many clusters to to learn. So for to determine the number of clusters, we just you uh, treated the hyperparameters, um, but uh, the but we have to have some class, uh, cluster label to train the network. So how how do we get the cluster label? Um, it turns out that there is a nice work that is uh, basically unsupervised uh, um, reputation learning uh, using uh, clustering. So we got inspired. We got inspired by this work. So the assumption is that. Uh, the nearest neighbors should have the same semantic label, right? The nearest neighbors, they, 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 they should in the same cluster. That's the basic assumption. Then basically we could uh, uh, compute uh, nearest neighbors from each Im image patches using, uh, using pre-trained network. And then the, those uh, nearest neighbors will give us, uh, uh, will, will give, will, uh, give us uh, sort of a cluster label. So scan loss, there are two terms. Now we can apply scan loss with from those uh, nearest neighbor, pre-computed nearest neighbors. So the first term is actually trying to enforce the consistent prediction among neighbors. So here X will represent uh, denotes uh, an image patch and the K will be the K nearest neighbor of this uh, image patch. We just uh, trying to maximize the, uh, the dot product between uh, those their cluster prediction scores, right? But, but uh, this, if we simply minimizing, uh, maximizing the, the dot product of this, uh, this will <clears throat> basically the clustering uh, will degenerate to basically one cluster. So all the patches will be predicted into uh, one cluster. That's why we should have some regularizer. So we use a simple regularizer, which simply to maximize the entropy uh, of each cluster score. Right to basically try to make the uh, distribution of uh, clusters to be uniform. So we, yeah, that's basically the the, the training loss from scan. Uh, we just max, uh, uh, we think we optimize the patch clustering network with uh, with with these two losses uh, on top of the uh, image patches. So after them, we we uh, after we trained the patch clustering network. We need to compute the semantic embedding vector from those uh, clustering results, right? For sync classes, we have the image available. Right? We can simply calculate the um, the <clears throat> we we can we can do the same, right? To segment the image into patches and then and then extract its um, and then compute the the um, activation score of uh, uh, of each image patches with respect to all the uh, patch clustering. And then using this mean um, mean histogram of this uh, class as its semantic embedding. So uh, for simplicity, I will just use uh, this uh, to denote this uh, uh, histogram vector. So we could repeat this for every class. Then we get a set of uh, thin class semantic embeddings. Now the question is that how can we get the uh, semantic embedding of unseen classes? So for for this, we 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 take a very simple approach. Right, we basically we think we construct unseen class embedding by doing the uh, weighted average from thin class embeddings. How do we get to the weights? The weights are simply obtained by using similarities in the word to vect embedding space. For example, to get the semantic embedding of sheep, we average the uh, we weighted average the semantic embeddings of antelope, cow, and deer, where the weights are from similarities in the word to vect space. Yeah, so this is uh, our approach. So for, we evaluated this uh, method on three data sets. So on uh, a fine grained data set CAP uh, and uh, generic animal uh, classification data set AVA and the thin recognition data set SUM on the, uh, with the public uh, uh, available data splits. So we, I would like to first to show some qualitative results uh, to convey that our approach really discover those meaningful visual properties. So if from this, uh, so this is the TSN and visualization of learned patch embeddings on our dataset. From this, we can observe that our uh, clustering algorithm actually learns uh, a large variety of visual properties, right? From 
from this uh, um, uh, fin, uh, those the drive pattern um, horn, right? So, and uh, another another observation is that one cluster includes image patches that can from different classes. This is important because uh, because because we should uh, have this property in order to transfer knowledge from seen to unseen classes. So we from this we could observe that those patches are. Um, Actually, in, within one cluster, the patches are coming from both seen and unseen classes. So this base, uh, this gives us a good foundation for, for the semantic embeddings. Then we can just apply our semantic embedding on top of the existing social learning methods, right? So for, we first try these generative models. So for semantic embeddings, we compare with what to vect. We show that our method significantly improved what to vect on top of across three different data sets. Uh, if we apply our methods to other uh, virtual learning model, the improvement are actually quite consistent. So, so to conclude, we in this paper we uh, we propose to um, we show that visual properties can be discovered from uh, representation learning and image patch clustering, and then we use patch clusters. Um, patch clusters to improve the unsupervised semantic embedding, like what to vect. In the end, we show that our VGSE outperform what to vect across different data sets and methods. So the, in the second work, uh, basic, uh, in the second work, uh, which, which is going to uh, be presented in the uh, new NIPS 2022, we propose um, a pure transformer architecture for virtual learning. Uh, where we basically learn semantic embeddings from uh, <clears throat> from from uh, online texture document. So the motivation is uh, uh, like this. So if basically given those three uh, pictures uh, of different birds, so I assume that uh, you are not a bird expert, so you do not know blue jay. So yeah, if I want you to uh, do the usual prediction of which image is blue jay. Uh, using only class name, right? Blue J. You probably have no clue, right? It's actually the same for language model. If you only use Blue J to query a language model, like go to vector or even clip, it's uh, <coughs> it's it's, uh, it's because it's fine grain class class. It's very likely that it will be really ambiguous, right? Because sometimes Blue J can also refer to a movie. So that's why it's ambiguous to extract semantic embeddings only from class names. However, the story becomes different if uh, I give you the description of Blue J uh, from online te textual uh, documents like Wikipedia. Right here, this is uh, the, uh, one of the sections of uh, Blue J in Wikipedia article. From this description, we find that Blue J's face is white, right neck is uh, uh, black, so and the tail are black, sky blue and white. Uh, we immediately recognize it should be the left image. This is a motivation. So it turns out that this, um, basically this intuition has been tried before, it's an old um, idea. However, those, those uh, papers, they, they only they encode Wikipedia articles with TF-IDF and then fix this uh, uh, representation, which is definitely not uh, expressive enough, <coughs> right? To learn fine grain um, categories, so another another uh, paper tries to um, do similar thing is uh, this CVPR sixteen work, but they basically rely on image level sentence annotations. So in this paper, we want to we only want to leverage class level online textual documents, and we want to make use of those uh, class level documents to improve semantic embeddings uh, for the virtual learning. That's why we propose I2D former. So the goal is to learn semantic embedding from noisy online textual documents for a given image. So we have we uh, the image of uh, of a thin classes. We we uh, basically uh, collect uh, uh, documents of uh, every every classes in the data set. Uh, for for example, here is a Wikipedia document. So from the image site, we have uh, uh, Im uh, from image side, we uh, append. So uh, we, we divide image into patches and append the CRS token. 
So th those are fed into a, a image transformer, uh, VIT. And then image transformer uh, outputs the patch embedding plus the uh, CLS token, which is supposed to capture the global representation of the input image. So from document side, we is similar. We append the CRS token to learn the global representation of the document. Then the document transformer is simply uh, basically a stack of, uh, of several uh, transformer blocks. We learned it from scratch. So <clears throat> it uh, will out give us uh, uh, basically a token. Uh, we, we, also to uh, we also tokenize the document uh, into, into individual words. Right? That's why it also give us the, uh, a set of uh, token uh, embeddings as well as global representation. Uh, uh, now, what I want, uh, we want to do first is to align image and document embeddings globally. Right? It's, it's just a, like a clip model. We uh, simply align two uh, paired data. Right? Here, we just want to uh, make uh, maximize the compatibility between image X and its corresponding document D globally. However, the issue is that the document is quite noisy. It can consist of a lot of uh, uh, irrelevant words, right? Ideally, we only want the um, document transformer or image transformer to only focus on some visually relevant words. So that's why we have, uh, we propose a attention modular here. So this is called I2D global, um, right? To, uh, for our attention modular, so the idea is that we uh, we try to we want us to to search the visual relevant words using image Apache as queries. So to this end, we um, we project the the patch image patch embeddings uh, into Q using linear transformations. And similarly for the document trans, uh, document side, we also do linear uh, layouts to construct uh, key matrix and value matrix. Uh, afterwards. We compute the dot product between uh, the query matrix and uh, and the key matrix. This will essentially give us uh, the attention, <clears throat> basically the, the 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 score, the attention scores of uh, every uh, uh, across across different uh, image patch and uh, uh, document uh, token uh, pairs. For example, here we sh uh, we we show the example of this uh, this image patch is uh, should be attended more on violet. Uh, compared to forest or green belly. After that, we apply uh, a softmax to get the, the attention score. So then uh, this attention score will be used as, um, <clears throat> as the, the ways uh, to do linear combination of, uh, uh, of the, the value matrix. Essentially, this step will recompute the image patch embedding using the embeddings from only relevant word tokens. From Q, then now we uh, we do pooling. We pull a Q into a flag vector. Um, then we can simply apply a linear layer to predict the compatibility score uh, or alignment score between document uh, document D and image X. So those both of the scores are actually maximi maximized by by uh, by the simple cross entropy laws. Um, so this is a. Uh, yeah, we call this uh, modular as I to the attention. At the inference time, to predict a novel uh, class uh, or unseen class, we simply uh, add max over basically all the documents to find the uh, the class with the highest com com alignment score with input image X. So this is the trend. Uh, so basically, we during training time we free the image transformer while we're only trying the document uh, transformer. This is a trend on only thin classes. For experiment setting, we still evaluate on those uh, popular, uh, uh, widely used uh, um, virtual learning data sets, including Caltech Bird, Animal, and Flower. We collect our, uh, we basically, we collect our own documents for, for this task. For Caltech Bird, we use All About the Birds, which is a bird in, in, in encyclopedia. Uh, and similar for Ava and Flower, we use, uh, uh, we collect our own document data. Um, now, uh, the first experiment we do is to compare this, uh, our method with other unsupervised embeddings. 
So in this table, we compare with the glove um, extracted from class name, right? And we also uh, try to extract a glove embedding from document, right? Simply to, to, to average all the, all the token in the document. And the MPNet is uh, the state state of the art sentence transformer where we encode the sentence in document and average them to get the class embedding of that class. So TFIDF is a classical method for uh, zero shell learning using document. VGSE is our prior work, which use image information and class name. So we observe that using documents outperform using only class name in general. That's the first message. The second message is that learning with image information usually improves mental embeddings. As you can see from VGSE, right, using image information. So the, the glove is immediately improved uh, significantly. So finally, our I2D transformer outperform all other unsupervised mending embeddings uh, because we use both image information as well as, as document information. So the second comparison we did is to apply our learned document embedding. Right? So basically document embedding means uh, uh, here, the CLS token, uh, the CLS uh, embeddings of, uh, from the output from document transformer. Right? We simply apply this as a semantic embedding for other virtual learning methods, right? and then compare with different semantic embeddings. Our observation is that uh, uh, our I2D embed can improve um, different uh, uh, zero short, uh, can be applied to improve different zero short learning methods uh, over those uh, GLAV or VGSE. This is quite consistent right, across all the methods and all the data sets. Um, there are some, I mean, uh, I, now I would like to show some interesting visualizations. So uh, first of all, I would like to show the image to document attentions. So here we simply, uh, to uh, we show that, uh, uh, we show the top three um, focused words with respect to um, individual image patches uh, from this uh, our I2D attention layer. So we sh we the the results show that our network can attend can focus on visually relevant words right from this uh, example. From this example, we can also see that this uh, image patch region of eyes really focus on uh, words like head and eye which is nice. Um, and uh, we also uh, trying to visualize the word to image attention. Here, I, we think uh, also uh, we do the reverse, right? Given a, a word, we calculate its uh, attention in the image regions from, the, um, from our I2D attention layers. We show that our um, method can actually localize those uh, visual words in image regions, even without um, we, uh, I mean, this is nice because this is not uh, supervised by any uh, uh, <clears throat> any of those uh, such such localization and supervision. And we can find those dolphin I find uh, found, ocean I find, and fin. This example of, of, of birds it also find uh, those fine grained uh, local properties. So to conclude, in this paper, we argue that online textual documents are powerful external knowledge for virtual learning. That's why we propose I2D former, which aligns image and documents globally. In addition, we also trying to learn fine grained interactions of image regions, document words. Uh, consequently, our I2D former outperforms state of the art, uh, unsupervised semantic embeddings. And uh, our, as a side benefits, our I2D former can also localize visual relevant words in image regions. So this uh, will conclude my talk and I'm happy to uh, answer some questions. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you for your excellent talk. Um, so uh, I, I do have some questions. So before when uh, uh, before I uh, ask the questions, I wonder if there's any uh, questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Wen Hao Chai, and I uh, I'm from the same lab as uh, Hao Tian. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my question is: It seems like uh, a language is a role as a bridge uh, and a common feature uh, space uh, with, with a, a vision uh, features. Uh, so for your first paper, mm -hmm. uh, you use a combination of the attribution, attribute of the vision, uh, vision features uh, and you use the word embedding to uh, 
make a make a, like a, con a combination. So, uh, how do you make an assumption that uh, the vision features and the, the word uh, like word embedding share the same roles for uh, the combination? So it's like uh, mm -hmm. in in an image, uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, vision features can be com combination in a position or other. Uh, other roles, but in, in documents, it seems like the role is not the same. So uh, how, how do you make an assumption that they are the same roles for uh, vision and text? So is your question uh, about, I, I, I'm not sure I, I understand it um, correctly. So do you mean that uh, if, how do we assume that, uh, that the, the, the visual information uh, I mean, image and uh, uh, word embedding that can capture uh, visual information or. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we that, I mean, that, that's the question we want to, uh, the challenge we want to address. Like we do not assume that word embedding actually capture visual information. It actually only, if it, it, word embedding that learned from pure text, right? That's why we here, we, we want to address this issue by learn new word embedding representations using image information that improve the uh, visual properties of word embedding. Does that uh, answer your question? Uh, yes, so do you use any uh, pre-chain word embedding models in this stage? Yes, in this paper, we, we tried different ones like what to wear, glove. Um, and, uh, and uh, the results uh, show that it's, uh, it can improve both. Okay. Uh, thank you. Sure. Yeah, thank you for the question. And thank you for uh, your team's answer. Uh, if there are any questions from the other audience? Oh, uh, Mohammed, I, I think you you previously uh, opened a ca uh, camera. I'm not sure if you uh, had a question from you. Uh, no, I'm just one of the co-authors on the paper. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, no worries. So uh, I I do have a quick questions for you know, uh, for our speaker. So uh, I wonder for the second work for the I2D former, uh, because you mentioned that you pair with a uh, image, you uh, you basically uh, split them into a token and feed into a uh, vision transformer. And for the document, uh, you basically also choose some of the uh, tokens and it will be sent into a document transformer. So I wonder because uh, you are not sending like a sentence or some concept into the document, uh, into the transformer. So for the, uh, because usually the document contains a lot of sentences. So, but Feeding to a transformer, there is a limited length. I mean, the encoding length. So how? Um, because maybe it's part of the word that you select, maybe not be described that image that well. So how should you like deal with that, uh, like encoder limitation, like length limitations? Right. That's a yeah. That's a good question. So uh, in this work, we actually filled um, filled uh, the, we did some filtering of uh, the, the the documents by reducing the 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 to reduce the length. Essentially, we just uh, identify the visual, uh, visually relevant section from those documents. And then this really reduce the, the length of documents. So for this per data set, we, I think the maximum number of uh, uh, tokens per document is uh, like about 400. So we 400? just set okay. this 400 as uh, the maximum number of uh, tokens. And then, then we have uh, our own document transformer. And right? that's why it's not really Limited by any pre-trained uh, transformer, so we train our from the from scratch. Got it, got it. Yeah, thank you very much for for this. And and also there is a uh, because uh, you show the attention. I think in the later slides there is uh -huh. a visualization uh, yeah, corresponding right. to uh, for the bird uh, and for the dolphin. And uh, so for for here, like uh, you basically show that uh, some of the region are corresponding to some of the words. So I wonder uh, it's so the document only contains these kind of words or just choose those words for, for visualization purposes? So uh, because these words, like, like a, most mostly like a concept, but not like a, not like a document kind of the scale. 
Right, yeah, we, we just, uh, for visualization purpose, we selected those uh, visually relevant words. And we here we want to uh, check that if those visual relevant words can be actually localized, right, from attention layer. Mm -hmm. We're not argue that our methods uh, actually only, is only uh, um, focusing on those visual relevant uh, words. It's a really challenging task. Right, because well, we have no supervision from that, so the the documents are really noisy. But it's mm -hmm. I think I I think I think our method can uh, handle it uh, uh, better than if we using only global uh, global uh, alignment like 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 clip. So we show ablation that this uh, localization this uh, local interaction attention modular can can reduce the noise to to some extent. So it's it perform better than using only global. Uh, branch. I see. So, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you, Yunqing.